Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Today, we're talking about a raging bitch. And no, I'm not talking about someone's wife, I'm not talking about someone's mom, I'm not talking about your girlfriend. I'm talking about a beer, a beer from Flying Dog. It is an absolutely amazing beer. Raging Bitch from Flying Dog pretty much set the standard for Belgian IPAs. I'll put one up in the corner so you can see it a little bit better. We're not gonna do an exact clone. What we're going to do is we're gonna kind of pay tribute to the Raging Bitch and modify it just a tiny bit for my taste. That's the greatest thing ever. If you find a beer you like, great. Kick it up a notch, you know, and just do whatever you want for you. Really simple. The majority of the recipes all agreed Maris Otter and Pale, pale Malt too. So I went with eight pounds of Maris Otter, some went 50-50, some went high on the Maris Otter. I only had eight pounds of Maris Otter until my brew shop gets more in, so that's how much we're putting in. Six pounds of Pale Malt, one pound of Caramel 60L, which that crystal, some people were going out as high as two pounds. A pound is fine for me. And then the part I'm changing, minus a couple parts, but the main part is I'm adding an entire pound of rye. I really want to bring out the spiciness, which comes out primarily from the yeast, but I want to add a little bit more spiciness. And that's 16 pounds of malt, which is supposedly the capacity for the Anvil Foundry 10.5 gallon. I also didn't have any warrior for bittering, so I just threw Columbus in there since pretty much the hop additions are constant Amarillo and Columbus back to back. And then the dry hopping, I threw Cryo Amarillo and Columbus so we could really bring out the aroma. As for the yeast, which everybody agreed on, was Weiss Labs 3522 Belgians, Ardans, or Ardans, if I can say that correctly. So I'm really, really, really excited. So basically I called this Raging Bitch on Rye. <laughs> it just seemed to roll off the thumb, just perfect. Um, and I know you're thinking, wait a minute, you got Golden Promise over here. Why you got Golden Promise over here? You're not using Golden Promise. Glad you asked. Our next brew is gonna be a West Coast IPA and I decided that's the only thing my brew shop had in stock. And I didn't want to use any more of my pale malt too right now. So we're going with the Golden Promise West Coast IPA. Should be one of our next videos, which you would know when you're subscribing, you would see, oh, hey, he's got a new video. Let me go check this out real quick. Please subscribe. We don't ask for Patreon. We don't ask for PayPal. We don't ask monetary support on this channel. Where I'm supported is by subscribers and people sharing the video. So please, if you haven't hit subscribe, hit subscribe. Don't worry about the bell not looking to ring your bell every day it's, or every week or whatever. The next thing is, is sharing. Share it on Facebook, share it on Reddit, share it wherever you talk to people. Send it on an email to some friends that you know like brewing. Greatly appreciate it more than you can ever imagine. So what are we doing today? We're brewing a Belgian IPA Raging Bitch on Rye. Let's get brewing. Okay, we're at 148, which it was just 150 a second ago and now it's 149. That's why I like to mash in at 148. That way if I hit 150, 151, I'm okay with that. If I'm putting 150 and I'm getting 153, 154, I'm not okay with that. Supposedly there's some sand coming from the Sahara Desert or something that's blowing over here into Florida and OMG, it is like an oven out here. I literally, it's seven in the morning and I'm cooking. <coughs> so let's get mashed in. We got to add our brewing salts. A lot of gypsum. Since we have rye in here, even when I don't have rye, I got my rice hulls done. You can always add a little more. Okay, we'll get mashed in here and we'll keep rocking. Turn the pump on. And there we go. Nice flow. We'll let that go for an hour and a half. We'll rock on. 90 minutes. Got a lot of grain in there to mash through and hopefully uh, get all those yummy sugars out of them. Okay, we're heating up our sparge water. We're at 148, 151 according to actual. So, let's get ready. Bring that up to 168. Once we hit 168, you give it a few minutes, pull it on out, about 10 minutes, pull it on out and start sparging the water or sparging the mash. Okay, we're at 168. We've been sitting 170 even. We're good. We're gonna pull the mash out, let it drain, sparge it, rock on. 
Hey, here, come, I'll turn the pump off first. That's yeah, okay. Let's see if we can lift this up. 16 pounds plus a lot of water. Damn it. Okay, here we go. And you can hear a drain. Okay, we're gonna let that drain for a little bit, then I'll start sparging. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and set this for boil. I know we haven't sparged, but by the time it gets there. Somebody's using their blower, sorry about the noise there. And we got some flies, which hopefully my, hopefully my catcher plant here will get it. Remember, it comes with some things scorching on the bottom. Low density burners definitely help, but it can still happen. Since we have rye in here, we definitely, definitely want to rub the bottom. Okay, we're at 197, we'll be a boil here very, very shortly. Remember, we're at 220. Okay, we're at 200 Fahrenheit. Somebody in one of the comment sections asked about what this was. This is a pitcher plant. The bugs actually land, they smell it, they go in and they die and they are consumed. And I like to have it near my boil, boiling sugar wart. Because I'm hoping they'll go there and stay away from here. And we are at a rolling boil. Okay, we'll give it 30 minutes and then we'll do our first edition, which is our 60 minute edition. Which for people who are new to brewing, that's a 60 minute countdown. There's a rolling boil. Got our 60 minute edition. Columbus. And our next edition is 45 minutes from now, a 15 minute edition. Okay, we're going to 15 minute edition, half an ounce of Columbus, half an ounce of Amarillo. We'll have 10 minutes, we'll have a five minute edition, and then we'll do our whirlpool and we'll be called today. Okay, we got another half ounce of Columbus, half ounce of Amarillo, five minute edition. We got a few more five minute additions. We're doing the Super Moss HP. Less, but not more. Find that entertaining to say the least. And Weist Yeast Nutrient. Almost a teaspoon. Time to chill the wart. We're going to chill to 150. We're going to whirlpool. But if you haven't seen it in one of the previous videos, paint stir or mortar, whatever you want to do for doing tile. Super cheap, like 15 bucks. I'm sticking it in there to help sterilize it since it's still boiling. Some people have expressed concern about putting this in at the last minute. It's been cleaned. I'm dropping it in right at the boil. I'm not going to let it sit there for 10 to 15 minutes. Now I will say if it's a counterflow, you want at least 10 minutes because you never know what was inside that you maybe didn't see or didn't get cleaned up that is still in there. That's the only thing I don't like about counterflows is you can't really see inside. All you can do is clean, clean, clean and hope you got everything. Okay, we're gonna start the chill. Okay, so we're sitting at 151, that's close enough. We got an ounce of Amarillo and an ounce of Columbus. It's gonna cool down a little bit. I'm not too worried about that.
you got to hold it up a little rather hit that than hit any of the important parts of my anvil. And there we go. We're going to do this for 10 minutes and we'll be back. Time to move it to the jug. Okay, we're sitting at about mm, a little under five and a quarter. It's close enough. I'm good with that. Okay, after that long day, 94 degrees Fahrenheit outside. According to the weather service, it feels like 109. My concrete is at 118. <laughs> I felt like I was dying all day long. Every time I went outside, I was dying. Maximum capacity on the Anvil Foundry, and sadly, we got the worst efficiency I've had yet. About a 59, 59.5% brew house efficiency, or yeah, brew, brew house efficiency. Sadly, I had to resort to the corn sugar and kick it up to a 1.075, which will leave us, if it dries out properly, to 1.014, and leave us at about 8.1%, about 0.2% less, which I was okay with that. That's not a big deal. But after that long day, I definitely deserve a real blind dog raging bitch. If you haven't had one, I'm sorry. If you have had one and can't get it, I'm even more sorry. If you live near it and you can get it, I envy you. Beautiful beer. I'm not going for that type of clarity. We're going to be using 3522 Weist, and I'm dropping things. 3522 Weist Ardans Yeast, like Ardans Forest. And if you've seen me do this before, you know, there's a magnet in there. A nice yeast kit going on. Spin it around. Sorry, I've been sweating all day. A sauna would have felt better. Would have felt a lot cooler, I'll tell you that. Okay. Pull our filter out, we don't want to filter our yeast. And as you've seen before, we want to over pitch and I make enough yeast starter to make sure I have plenty for both the brew and for populating more yeast. Sorry, I sound a little more tired than I did earlier this morning. Earlier this morning, I had plenty of energy, had my coffee. But like I said, it is insane out there. I mean, 118 Fahrenheit on the concrete, and it just feels like a furnace around you. Jacksonville, Florida, I can't imagine what it feels like in Miami or any further south. I figure the sand from the savannah deserts coming over here would block out the sun and make things cooler. Yeah, no, it's supposed to get hotter in a few more hours, which it's already like, two o'clock, so uh, it's getting even hotter and usually noon's the high. So we'll let this ferment. I'll post a picture of the current original gravity, which I took with the new tilt. We bought a yellow tilt. So now we have a yellow, a blue, and a red. Thank you again for joining Bitter Reality Brewing. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you.